Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be taking a look and dissecting the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC weapons. So, obviously, the trailer is very brief and it didn't show that many weapons, but I'm going to try it and see if I can figure out roughly where I think they'll sit in the meta upon release. Obviously, I don't have the DLC. Your guess is as good as mine, but I feel like some of these weapons are obviously going to be better than others just based on what we've seen. So in the first clip we see power stance curve swords, but they are a reverse grip. Um, similar to the power stance curve swords we have now, it seems to be a pretty fast move set. It seems to be about the same speed as power stance curve sword. That being said, it does look like there is potential in that attack chain for it to use thrusting attacks, meaning can benefit from Spear Talisman, and we see an Ash War do a thrust attack. That being said, I don't know what purpose they would really fit in, since Power Stance Curve Swords are obviously already very good. Having a slightly changed Power Stance Curve Sword move moveset doesn't really make a lot of sense to add to really change up the PvE or PvP viability. That being said, they do look like they have pretty decent root motion, so the range should be pretty good. Something that Power Stance Curve Swords kind of lacks is that range aspect, so it might be a little bit more range, a little bit slower, and that's probably the trade-off FromSoft was thinking when balancing them. Next up, we have the Dual Throwing Daggers. This is interesting because it looks like it does good poise damage, Obviously, we don't know what the poise damage of the enemy is, but in two attacks, they were able to stun the enemy. So, I'm going to assume it's probably something like 20 to 30 poise, and I'm going to assume the daggers are probably going to do like 5-ish poise damage per attack. Now, if this is a natural war, or if this is just a regular weapon moveset, I'm not quite sure. I would assume... It is a Ash of War given that it is ranged and it is probably going to be a bullet Ash of War. If I had to assume, it would be a quality stat spread like the Storm Ashes, and this would probably be a good replacement to Stormblade given that they seem faster and they have two hits. Now, depending on the tracking, it could change. If this is a regular weapon moveset, that would be very interesting because you wouldn't really be able to calculate DPS accurately since the travel distance per projectile would be different depending on where the enemy is. And so that would delay the DPS of your attack by a decent bit. And if it is a regular attack, then how are they balancing it so you can't just stay out of range of all the enemies and just backpedal the entire time? I know they have had problems with that in the past, balancing some ranged weapons and ranged spells. So, it'll be interesting to take a look and see when the DLC releases. Following from that, we have this new pink AoE spell. It looks kind of like a nebula-esque design with many different projectile bullets spawning in a controlled radius. That's not necessarily bad, although there's already a lot of that, at least on the faith side. So if it's an intelligence-based spell, that would be good, but it does look like it's going to be a faith-based incantation based on the fact they're using a sacred seal. If it does something unique compared to Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, Death Lightning, or the Flame Pillar one, that would be nice, but as it is, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to add. Especially if, well, if it does magic damage, I guess it would be good. Since Faith doesn't have access to a magic AoE yet. But, at least in PvE, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a large AoE like that. Since Faith already has multiple of those, and they're all kind of game-breaking if you stack the right buffs. And on the PvP side, obviously, it's going to be quite bad. Just because... It's a very slow-ish cast time, and the AoE doesn't look like it 
is going to be unreactable. So it's going to be a similar thing with the ones we currently have where you just probably aren't going to be able to get the hit off, which is a big problem for this. And then we have the Monk Fist, Fisticuff moveset, whatever you want to call it. This is interesting. It reminds me of the Bone Fist from Dark Souls 2. Obviously, really fun weapon to use, and I'm glad that they're adding viable bare fists back, even though the Bone Fist wasn't really a, wasn't a bare fist, but whatever. It looks agile. Uh, the problem is going to be the range. In PvE and PvP, unless they give it super high DPS like they did the Claws, where it just kind of out DPSs everything else, it's not going to be that great. And if it's bare fist, they're probably not going to give it that much poise damage, which unlike the fist weapons we currently have, the Kaistis and Iron Ball and all that, being able to do massive poise damage, probably not going to have that if it's so agile and just bare fist, probably not going to be that great. PvP, if it's fast enough, it could pull us back into the Kaistis, Iron Ball, Claw meta that was kind of around briefly before they nerfed the poise damage. That's interesting. I don't quite really care for fist weapons outside of, you know, obviously Star Fist being the best poise breaker in the game, mostly, and the Venomous Fang having roughly the highest DPS on an unbuffed build. Then we have this giant pot. Now, if you're not really familiar with the pots in this game, I wouldn't blame you. They're not really used all that often. The regular red main fire pot on 80 strength can reach AR values up to like 650. This is hopefully a consumable. I would hate if they made this a weapon just because it wouldn't make that much sense. But as a consumable, you're probably going to be looking at AR values into the thousands, which is pretty insane. But if it's a large AoE and it does high damage, I can't see it being useless. In PvP, it would be pretty bad though, just because it is so slow. Okay, so then we have the chain gun crossbow. It looks like it's going to be a repeat of the repeating crossbow in Dark Souls 3. The repeating crossbow being Gale's crossbow. Probably going to be very niche use cases where it's very good. Probably going to be pretty good with status. Outside of that, probably going to be dog shit. You might be able to do some funny stuff in PvE with it just because you're using all those projectiles. But PvP, yeah. You basically have sleep and that's it. Maybe rot. If the cast speed, it, if the arm time is as slow as this clip implies and that's not like a natural roar or something, that's going to be pretty bad. Then we have a bear roar. Probably going to act like Greyro's roar. You get a buff, maybe a debuff, does some damage. Considering how niche Greyro's roar is, if this is primarily faith based, which I probably, I don't think it will be. It's probably going to go into like an arcane split again, like the dragon spells, or another hybrid split. It's not going to be that useful. So then we have this flowing curved sword, Ash of War, I hope, because if that's a regular moveset, god, that's going to be awful. I think this is probably a new Ash of War they're introducing. It reminds me of the Dancer's Chanted Swords Ash of War from Dark Souls 3 which is incredibly niche. It, it's bad in PvE, incredibly niche in PvP. There is a true combo with it where you can infinite if you keep bouncing off the wall on that first hit. It's very flashy, which means it's probably gonna suck, which is just the unfortunate truth of FromSoft weapons. The thing I'm most interested about is the pig that the Looks like player is riding. If we get customizable mounts, that's going to be pretty cool. I know a lot of mods have added that. I personally don't care one way or the other, because outside of my first playthrough, I've never traversed the open world. I have always just uh, used Cheat Engine or Save Scummed my way around the world, because 
I don't care that much about the open world. I mostly care about the legacy dungeons. But the gravity lance that the guy has is, it's a lance. It, you don't see the moveset at all. He just kind of raises it on an Ash of War or so, something like that on the back of the boar. It would be nice to have another Great Spear. At the same time, the Great Spears have already kind of fleshed out all they need. You can maybe add an Intelligence one, the Strength Intelligence, maybe that's what this is, because otherwise it, every niche is filled. You don't need another Great Spear, really. Give us another Great Spear with a changeable Ash of War. Lance being the only one is kind of meh. I hate to say it, but this is the weapon I'm most interested in. It Having a shield slash spear combo sounds really nice, and hopefully it kind of plays like Valor Heart, where you're blocking while you're attacking. That was a really interesting and fun mechanic from the Dark Souls 3 DLC. That being said, if it is a spear and shield, I hope this guy's going for a heavy attack. It kind of looks like it, but that's a really slow and telegraphed attack. Maybe it'll do good poise damage in PvE, but in PvP I can't see that being viable. And if it does block damage, that leaves you really, really open to getting your stamina absolutely nuked in PvP. In PvE, it kind of whatever stamina consumption isn't really that important. But yeah, this is the weapon that I want, that I want to try out first thing in the DLC. And finally, the Crucible Wings. This has been added to many mods, and assuming FromSoft balances it like the mods, or like they have done with the other Crucible incantations they have, or maybe this is a Nash of War, I'm not quite sure, it would be pretty good because at least the incantations themselves don't do holy damage. The Ash of Wars do, but they're mostly a strength split, or a physical split, so it doesn't matter that much that it's holy damage, you can bypass the enemy's defenses pretty easily. That being said, I hope the new weapon classes are good, but with FromSoft's track record, it's probably going to be a lot of PvP meta weapons, and PvE is going to just stay the same. So, like Scavenger's Curve Sword, Iron Ball, Star Fist, Darkman Greatsword, Blasphemous Blade, Venomous Fang, etc, etc. That being said, PvP normally gets changed pretty majorly by the DLC. Obviously, you would expect it to be the reverse. You think that the new stuff would be better than the old stuff, but that's generally not the case. In PvE, because... Well, PvE really only cares about DPS or poise damage per second. So, I am really happy with the weapons that we have shown, but I think I'll have to wait and see until we actually get the DLC. But I think these weapons aren't going to change the meta that heavily.